For the example problem of the main video, link below, we would like to calculate the engineering strain and the true strain of member AB if we know that its length has been compressed by 217 microns due to the 144 kilonewtons external load. This is the fourth example for the axial loading main video. If you haven't watched the example of that main video, do that first to know where these numbers are coming from. Up to this point, you don't need to know how we've managed to calculate the deformation delta. Axial deformation will be covered in a future video, and the link to that video will be posted down in this video's description. From the main axial loading video, we know that engineering strain is defined as delta over L. Using the 1.5 meters that we found for the length of member AB, we can use the given delta in meters to find the engineering strain. And remember that strain is a dimensionless value, even though it's sometimes written as a percentage. Using the expression that we defined for true strain, we notice that first we need to find the current length L. And notice that I'm subtracting delta because during that first main video, we had defined that member AB was subjected to compression. Substituting these values, we find that the true strain is very similar to the engineering strain and the negative value helps us realize that for the engineering strain, we should always account for a positive or negative delta depending on if the stress is tensile or compressive. It's worth pointing out that the reason for the two strains to be roughly 0.21% apart is because the stress was low, especially when compared to the yield strength. So of course, the deformation and the strain were also very low. As the strain increases, the difference between true and engineering strain will be more pronounced. You can find a list of topics and video links for the Mechanics of Materials course in the description below. Thanks for watching.